What are the three best books on entrepreneurship this year? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sam and hit that subscribe button if you like this video just so you can see more of the stuff that we're putting out and we can spread these ideas. The three best books on entrepreneurship this year, what are they? Number three, $100 Startup by Chris Gillibo. By the way, an overlapping theme that I find myself talking about in this video is really just an emphasis on like the internet and how much these books and I guess entrepreneurship in general focuses on the on the internet nowadays. Like this is it's a new day and age. This is the information and digital age. There's nothing like it's so different from the way that things used to be. Things are changing. People hate it. People love it. And that's just the way that it is. So let's get to it. Number three, hundred dollar startup by Chris Gillibo. What's laid out in this book is a way to make passive income out of what matters and is fun to you. You don't need to go to the bank crying and begging for money. You don't need to go to school to get a degree to do this either. And I really want to put emphasis on that. This book is more of a blueprint than like a series of ideas. How to find clients, how to write surveys, how to find out what to serve people before giving it to them, selling points, value propositions. Undeniable offers a super distinct approach to FAQs on your website, which I, I, I never heard that anywhere else. A profitable approach, might, might I add. A 39 step product launch checklist $100 startup is notably brief about all these odds and ends, scaling, price experimentation, and plenty of things I hadn't heard about before, but despite its practical layout, I heard a lot more of the entrepreneurial spirit than in his other one I'd re I recommended in another video, um, Side Hustle. $100 startup is more for someone who is looking to turn a side hustle into a straight up company. The number two best book on entrepreneurship this year is Millionaire Fast Lane by MJ DeMarco. I feel like I mentioned this book in so many of these other videos, so I'm glad to finally bring it up. Millionaire Fast Lane is unconventional in the sense that getting rich doesn't have to take 20 to 40 years. It could just as, if not more easily, take two to four years instead. This is the type of business book that if you go to college for business, it'll cost you 100% It'll cost you a hundred times more and you'll learn 99% less and it'll take two years instead of two weeks or days. Nothing intended against college, but that's kind of the stress that I want to put here on these books being, you know, a, an acceleration of success. This is not the 20th century. It's not the industrial revolution. And I swear that like maybe 90% of people don't seem to understand this to the point where it's like, hey, I can do what I love, be my own boss and make like tens of thousands of dollars a month in passive income. How is that possible? Today, you could learn how to do this for $300 or $30. Get a course, try it out, start an online business. It might not take off immediately. I mean, I've been doing these book reviews for two years. Recently, however, I have adjusted my strategy because there was like a nine month dip in affiliate sales and, and views, and I was worried that I wouldn't actually hit the um, hit the Google AdSense revenue mark that I would need, but that's a different video topic. I wasn't making these three best books of this year recommendation videos before. I just started doing it like a couple weeks ago, and I had plenty of help making the decision. Anyway, the coolest thing to me about Millionaire Fastlane is how he uses the experience of driving and, you know, being on the road, on the highway. He compares that as a metaphor for the experience of wealth building, if that makes sense. There are three different types of people. That, I mean, you, you can't even write nonfiction books like these anymore nowadays without categorizing things. The three different kinds of people that are sidewalkers, the author calls, who basically don't get anywhere in life, who you would think are just like, are just like the homeless and the homeless do change. I met a guy yesterday who was homeless three years ago and now like, <laughs> He is living life. <laughs> so there are sidewalkers, there are people um, in the slow lane. You know, they have jobs, but they're just doing manual labor. They're, they're, they're trading their time for money at a flat fee. Flat, I can't, like flat fee. Like you're not getting like a raise. It doesn't really keep up with inflation. And even if it does, it doesn't keep up with your desires, does it? They'll be doing that job for 50 years and they might be in debt for the rest of their lives. Maybe they'll retire. Maybe they'll have millions when they retire, but they won't be able to do what they expected when they started saving it up. And by the way, maybe a lot of them, I feel like a lot of this is so generalized, but a lot of them probably saved so much of their money and a lot of a lot of them didn't. But the ones who did, you could save your money or you could end up in the fast lane. These are like rat race people, the slow lane people. The fast lane people, that's where you just make a ton of money constantly and you can do it at a young age and over time you just seem to make more and more per hour, day, week, month, and year. By the way, if any of this sounds discriminatory, I will stress that the fast lane 
doesn't care at all about your, this is the best thing about it, about your background, your age, your education, your race, sex, gender, height, weight, physical or mental conditions, or anything like that. For me, the biggest takeaway from this book was the differences between scale and magnitude. Scale being how many people you help and magnitude being to what degree, to what depth you help them. And I think he said that scale creates millions, magnitude creates millions, scale and magnitude create billions. Isn't that crazy? People think that the internet is a gold rush. Like they think it's just this, this like fad that's gonna drop soon. I don't know why. I mean, when you know, when Facebook and Instagram, at some point, who knows, those companies might very well go under, but when they go under, another company is gonna be taking their place. The internet is not a gold rush. Uh, Jeff Bezos once compared it to electricity, saying that eventually, and quite inevitably, it'll be everywhere you go. And we're definitely getting to that point. With Amazon and Google putting up like satellites to, to where like basically internet is gonna be free everywhere. Imagine not having to pay internet, like bills for internet. That, that'd, be, that'd be nice, right? <laughs> E-commerce. Online commerce is a 23 trillion, with a T-R, dollar industry. What other industry in the universe is 23 trillion dollars a year? I think it might actually be 25 now. <laughs> you really think the internet is gonna slow down? <laughs> The internet is on the fast lane. It has gas on the pedal. Millionaire fast lane is a flood of of insights on business and and like very fast exponential at the same time growth in this century. Not you know the 1800s where let's learn about about value like things. <laughs> I didn't go to I didn't go to college. Okay, probably that's obvious here. But the number one best book on entrepreneurship. This year is The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss, legendary podcaster, escaping the 9-to-5, living anywhere, and joining the new rich. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people have actually done this, and they credit this book above all others as what really did it for them. This is probably the most well-known book on the topic. What's compelling about this guy's story, and I guess how it could very potentially become yours, is how now there is just too big to describe a difference between how he spends his time and how he makes his money. Which is a really interesting way to think about things. Some stuff I had heard before, like, you know, like sales practices and um, and productivity tips. Like, do you really need these in a book called The 4 Hour Work Week? For some people, like me, his writing style and storytelling can definitely do more than compensate for that. In my review, I go a little in depth on like the title, 4 Hour Work Week. Some people have problems with that, workaholics, like, yours truly. But I really don't think that he meant it in the way that a lot of people are probably convinced he did. I, I think it had more to do with getting 10 times more done so that it's a four hour work week instead of a 40 hour work week. But it could be a 40 hour work week and you could get 400 hours worth of work done. So there. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite section was either the rant about the absurdity of a nine to five job. Some of this book is a little bit spacey too. The absurdity of the work week in general. Either that or the one about trying to automate. I think the author said it was like 95% of his life. How do you automate your whole life? Like what is that? As he says, automation is liberation. The best thing to me about the four hour work week is how far beyond the four hour work week it, it, its scope of focus really goes. Like, he talks way more than you would expect about like finding happiness and purpose and living life like it really, really matters to you. And discovering yourself, like just really deep odds and ends. And like, those are those are kind of a, they're, they're a very deep anchor of why to have, a, you know, a four hour work week or a work week where you know, you can do some of the stuff that I listed in this video, like what you love and make 10 or $20,000 a month in passive income and be your own boss and whatnot. But those are my three best books on entrepreneurship this year. Please let me know in the comments below if there's anything I'm missing, if you guys would like what you would change about the list. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Also hit that subscribe button so that, yeah, I mean, it really helps spread these ideas. <laughs> Making self-growth normal is not a tiny goal and we can't do it alone. If you could also hit that notification bell to get a notification whenever I drop new videos, that would mean the world to me. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You can find me everywhere and I'll see you then.